Sparking the Inferno, written by Brandon Carter. Fire burns not without a timeline of preparation. The common eye sees only the conflagration, oblivious to the path stretching out behind that single instigating spark. Then again, it's hard to see much of anything when the flames are clawing at your heels. The Keeper of the Tomes Prologue The young man buried his mouth in the crook of his elbow. Less to stifle the reek of sodden earth and the coppery scent he was desperately fighting not to think about, and more to prevent his panicked breathing from alerting the pair of road-scuffed boots on the other side of the overturned wheelbarrow from pinpointing his hiding spot. In the utter darkness beneath the barrow, he couldn't be sure of the boots' location, but they were close enough it didn't matter. "'There's nothing back here,' said the boots' owner, a husky male voice tinged with disappointment. Just some baskets, rusted tools, and some rotten equipment. A soft kick rocked his hiding place, and a brief flash of daylight stung his eyes before the barrow shifted back into place. A burning ache in his right side ebbed with every breath, and he struggled against the urge to reach back and comfort his wounded ribs. Another voice answered from the other side of the hovel, too far to make out what was being said. Nah, the boots responded, and he could hear someone rooting around in the pile of empty wicker baskets. Just a bunch of provincial junk. A whole lot wouldn't fetch half a shill back home. The boots sighed, and a rock bounced off the wall of the barrow. Been a-waving these stupid hunks of glass around all day long without seeing so much as a sparkle. Not gonna be any townspeople left if things keep on like this. A distant chuckle, followed by more incomprehensible speech. For these icks, an incredulous snort, they're barely even people. He swallowed back the growing lump in his throat and closed his eyes. Picturing the area around their hovel, he searched for his best shot at escaping the two strangers without getting grabbed. To the east, the edge of the Tragen Woods butted up against the rim of the property, but a tangle of wild blackberries made escape in that direction nearly impossible without a lot of luck and a bevy of shallow tears in his skin and clothing. The north and west weren't much better. The organized spacing of the apple orchard lent itself toward ease of access, making it practically impossible to lose anyone in the wide open groves. With little to no hiding places among the manicured apple trees, he doubted he'd make it far before one of the two men ran him down. That left the area on the south side of the house, with a forest encroached on the barn. Problem was, the house itself stood between him and the small grove of balsam fir that would mask his retreat. He'd either have to go around or through the little hovel and without knowing the location of the second stranger, either way risked a calamitous face-to-face encounter. The leather strap cutting into his wrist was slowly leaching the feeling from his right hand, but he didn't dare shift his weight to relieve the pressure. Hunched over within the wheelbarrow's bucket as he was, the wooden handcart mounted his back like a turtle shell and would mirror even the slightest adjustment to his position. He tried not to think about that strap, but his thoughts betrayed him, following its length down to the object wedged between his hip and the base of the wheelbarrow. As if summoned by his mental attentions, the metallic tang of blood tickled his nostrils once more, and a soft whimper unconsciously slipped through bloodless lips. The seconds passed in strained silence. His forearm tightened around his clenched jaw. He flexed his thighs, preparing to burst out from beneath the barrow to make a mad dash for the trees. Navigating the brambles would be a small price to pay for escape. He was no stranger to pain. The distant voice sounded again, more forceful now, but no closer to being understood. The boots didn't respond. Soil crunched against moving feet. A thin line of sunlight blinked into existence as fingers wiggled through the muck to grip the rim of the barrow. Someone hiding there in the dark. The curious whisper set his heart to pounding, and his breath froze in his throat. With a creak of aging wood, The barrow shifted, and a blinding light stole away the protective black 